So good evening, everyone. So I'm Dr. Ao from the Department of Science and Environmental Studies of the Education University of Hong Kong. So uh, this evening, so I will share with you about our program, which is Master of Arts in Education for Sustainability. So uh, the short form of our program is uh, MAEFS. So uh, in general, so for our program, so we will have uh, one intake every year. So now what I'm going to talk about will be about the September intake in the coming uh, semester. So uh, this is the division of today's um, talk. So uh, first of all, I will introduce about uh, the advantages or maybe the attractiveness of choosing Hong Kong and choosing our university. And then I will also talk about uh, why you need to choose our program. So some attractive or some advantages of our program. And then we also have some student sharing. So um, we we'll have some graduates and also have current students to share uh, their experience in studying this program. And after that, we will also talk about the so program entrance requirement. And finally, there will also be some Q&A session. So uh, you may also use the Q&A function of this Zoom webinar. And then you can just type your question. And if we have time, then we can just go through the questions one by one. So first of all, why Hong Kong? So uh, as you can see, so in this image, so you can see Hong Kong is a place that is a that involve a mixture of Chinese and also Western culture. So Hong Kong has, has always been recognized as an international city. So uh, for Hong Kong, it is actually one of the major city in Asia. So therefore uh, it has been considered as a place which is uh, the so-called global futures. And so uh, we will have uh, a lot of uh, economic activities and also other activities in Hong Kong. And in addition, so in Hong Kong, we also have the best university in Asia. So uh, apart from our university, so uh, in this very small city, we also have several universities and some of them, they are, uh, they are ranked very high internationally. And then uh, we also have very good uh, opportunities for the jobs and career in Hong Kong. So uh, after graduation, uh, you will have the chance or the opportunity to engage in different jobs and also different career. And in particular for the local students, so you will also be able to apply for a visa and then stay in Hong Kong for one year and look for job opportunities after graduation. And besides, so uh, Hong Kong is uh, located as the southern part of the China, which is just adjacent to Shenzhen. So it is a very good, at a very good location it is a very good gateway to China. So uh, therefore, uh, with the very rapid development of the economies and also uh, other activities in China, so uh, this is also one advantage of studying in Hong Kong. And besides, so uh, in Hong Kong, it is a very safe and secure place. So therefore, if you stay in Hong Kong, so you will enjoy uh, this uh, very good and very nice city. And in addition, we also have a lot of culture. So as I mentioned, so it is an international city, so you will be able to experience both Western and also Chinese culture. And of course, you will be able to enjoy a lot of like different kinds of foods and so on. So uh, here is the map showing the location of Hong Kong. So you will see Hong Kong is located at the southern part of China. So this is just a magnification. So it is just adjacent to Shenzhen. So therefore, uh, if you look at this MTR system map, so you will be able to see that, uh, so you can take the MTR and then just go to like Low Wu and also other places, then you will be able to go to China. So mainly China is very rapidly. And apart from the MTR, so uh, in Hong Kong, we also have the high speed rail station and we also have a very good international airport. So it is at a very good location and you will be able to visit Hong Kong and then come here from different parts of the road. So now we'll be talking about uh, the reason why you need to choose the Education University of Hong Kong. So well, here you can see this is a picture of the campus snapshot. So our uh, campus is located at Taipo, which is at the northern part of Hong Kong. So uh, this is a very good location, as you can see. So we have very beautiful sceneries around our campus. It's surrounded by the green sceneries. And then this is the light view. So you can see uh, it is a very beautiful campus. 
and uh, for our campus, so we have a lot of uh, different kind of facilities. So in here, so you will see this uh, snapshot of the library. So our library is a very large place. So we have uh, over 10,000 square feet area inside the library. And you can see we also have a lot of discussion tables and not shown in this diagram, but in the library, you also find some discussion rooms and very recently, we also have some newly established future classrooms. So our students will be able to uh, enjoy a very good environment for studying as well as doing some group activities or project work inside the library. And our library also has a lot of books and also other resources, uh, both in the physical form. And we also have a lot of like the ebooks that you can access online through the uh, university network. And other than the library, so we also have a lot of sports facilities, as you can see. So we have like uh, the indoor and outdoor sports course. And we also have a swimming pool inside the campus. So therefore, when the students, they study in this university, they will be able to enjoy uh, different kinds of facilities. And in addition, so the university also has a gym. So you can also uh, do some exercise, maybe after your uh, normal classes as well. So uh, regarding our university, so as the name implies, the Education University of Hong Kong. So uh, our one of the major parts of our university's education will be related to the education or pedagogy side. So uh, for the education sector of our universities, so uh, actually it is ranked very high internationally and also in Asia. So uh, up to the latest data 2021 QS World University ranking, so our university is ranked the third highest in Asia in the education and also the 16th in the world for the education. And apart from the educational courses or so our university, so we adopt this education plus vision. So uh, we believe that education is something that is more than education. So that means that apart from the, uh, the courses that we teach, you how to teach, that means to prepare for the future teachers. We also have additional courses. For example, we have the science courses, and then we have the courses like this master program, which is education for sustainability. So we want to, uh, on one hand, so to give the uh, education about the pedagogy side, and on the other hand, we will also uh, provide the education related to the academic parts, uh, which will include the different subjects, and apart from our departments, so other departments in the university, they will also offer the courses related to different disciplines. So uh, in general, so our academic scope is not just limited to the traditional strength of the teacher education, but we have also expanded our education to a very wide range of complementary programs. So uh, other features of our university. So our university is a government funded university. So it is publicly funded and we are dedicated to the advancement of teaching and learning through a diverse offering of the academic and research programs on teacher education, as well as other complementary programs, including social sciences, humanities, and also science. And our university actually has a very long history. So uh, it actually can be dated back to the 1853 and 1881, when the first government's normal school was established by the then governor of Hong Kong in Wan Chai. And later on, so uh, actually several normal schools in Hong Kong, they combined together and they formed uh, our university. And now uh, the Education University of Hong Kong actually is the only university here that is focusing on the teacher education. And another attractive feature of our university is that uh, the graduates of our university, so they have very good job opportunities because our programs, they are able to equip the student with the professional and also the subject knowledge that are important for the future role. And these are highly recognized by the employers. So uh, actually we have some questionnaires and surveys to the employers from time to time, and we always receive very good recognition. And in 2019, so uh, with the with updated data, so the average monthly salary of our graduate was a uh, Hong Kong dollar, uh, over $27,000. So which is very well above the average monthly salary of the graduates in other parts of Hong Kong. So uh, this is 
are actually very good. Uh, there's a very good data compared to other universities. So uh, about our department, so our department, so we have uh, the teaching staff and the academic staff that are coming from a very interdisciplinary background. So uh, we are focusing on the teaching community services as well as research and knowledge transfer at the same time. So uh, on one hand, so we have the academic staff and teaching staff who are science educators and also environmental educators. So they have the backgrounds in different subjects, in teaching different subjects, including physics, biology, environmental education, general studies, chemistry, and also creativity. And then on the other hand, so we also have the researchers. So they are conducting research related to general science as well as the environmental science. So uh, for the research in our SES department, so it ranges from physics, biology, environmental science or environmental studies, geography to chemistry and creativity. So you can see that actually there is a very fine balance between the two sides. So on one hand, we have good educators and then on the other hand, we have scientists. So we think that so this is actually in agreement with the education plus vision of our university. So we want to provide a good teacher education. And then on the other hand, we also have the uh, complementary education related to the different subjects, different disciplines. So regarding our research profile, so in our department, so uh, our, uh, our department, our staff has been listed in the world's top 2% scientists in the 2020, and in fact, also last year in 2019. So a uh, number of staff in our department, including Professor Wong, Professor Ho, Professor Wu, Professor Yen, Dr. Lee, Dr. Zhang, Professor Chow and also myself. So uh, our staff has been ranked in this very uh, uh, recognized rank of the world top scientists because of our active research uh, activities. So uh, in particular, so uh, some of our staff, they also uh, participate in a, a number of international competitions. So for example, in this international exhibition of inventions, so you can see that uh, a number of staff, they have um, been recognized. So for example, in 2018, so Professor Yuan, uh, Professor Chow, Professor So, they has been awarded a silver medal. And then in 2019, so Professor Wong has been awarded a silver award and also very recently, so in last year, so Dr. Deng and also Dr. Zhang in our department, they have also been awarded the Silver Award. So uh, these are mainly the, the new uh, inventions that are invented by them, and they have been internationally recognized. And maybe let me take some time to uh, introduce some of our major staff. So here you can see this is Professor Wong Meng Hong of our department. So he is the advisor environmental science in our department. And he has been, uh, actually he has been conducting environmental science research for a, period of, for a long period of time. And he is actually listed among the top Chinese environmentalists in the world in 2019. And apart from environmental science, we also have Professor Rudolf Wu. So he is an other advisor in our department, and he was also the founding director of the state key laboratory in marine pollution. So our university, we have a state key lab in the labor, um, we have the state key lab in our university campus, and this was funded by Professor Wu. So uh, at the moment, so Professor Wu currently is also the director of the Regional Center of Excellence in Marine Pollution of the Partnerships in Environmental Management for the Seas of East Asia, United Nations. And other than them, so we also have Professor Keith Ho. So Professor Keith Ho has been recognized as a highly cited researcher by uh, Creative Analytics in 2021. So in fact, this is the fourth consecutive years that he has been named in the list of the most influential researchers. So we can see that uh, in our department, so we have very active researchers and they are highly recognized internationally. And here you can see that uh, this is the opening ceremony of the State Key Lab uh, for the marine pollution. So uh, this is actually the first state key laboratory inside our university, and it was opened in June 2018. And this is in alignment with the university's ongoing effort 
to promote environmental studies as a discipline that is complementary to education. So on one side, we provide the teacher education, and on the other side, so we are actively conducting research in different aspects, including the environmental science related to marine pollution, as well as other disciplines. And here, let me also introduce our other important places that are um, involved in our department. So on the left-hand side of this slide, so you will see the Eco Garden. So the Eco Garden, it is a little garden that you can find inside our campus. So it was established in 2019 based on a research project in our department, and it served actually several purposes. So first of all, it can facilitate the university development of environmental studies. And it can also help to provide the education for sustainability because uh, this eco garden is actually can be considered as a little ecosystem. So uh, by going to this eco garden, so uh, students and also the public will be able to learn about the ecosystem and also learn about the biodiversity. So we can actually use this to provide the education. And in fact, we also have some programs that uh, allow the students and also the public to visit this garden. And this can also help to enhance students' knowledge and also the awareness on environmental protection. And on the other hand, we also have the STEM laboratory inside our department. So inside this STEM laboratory, so we have a lot of instruments and also a lot of learning toolkit to promote the STEM education and also for the conduction of research related to STEM. So for example, we have uh, some STEM kits for the uh, educational project, and we also have some the Lego and then the 3D scanner, the 3D printer as well. And we also have some uh, instruments and also apparatus for the studies related to robotics. We have the drain machine as well as other different tools for STEM experiments. So this STEM laboratory has provided the facilities to help us to conduct a lot of STEM activities during the teacher education in a program. And at the same time, we sometimes organize some workshops from time to time so that uh, uh, for example, the secondary school teachers, they can also visit our university and then they can uh, learn about the data STEM research and also uh, STEM techniques related to this educational program. So now maybe let me talk about why you need to choose MAEMS. So here you can see these are the photos of our recent graduate. So uh, you can see that we have a very large student group size. So uh, every year, so we have a large group of students and we also have a very harmonious culture. So you can see that they are all very happy inside the photos. And we have like lectures, mass lectures. And at the same time, we also have like group discussions. So the students and also the teachers, they are just sitting around and I have very relaxed discussion about the environmental issues and also about the sustainability issues. And then in the middle, so this is actually the graduation photo of our recent graduate, which is the class of 2019. So uh, due to the pandemic, so the students, they are not able to come to university to take the graduation photo together. But you can see that they just unite themselves and then they take this kind of photos by individually taking one photo and then merging together to get a class photo. So you can see that the students, they are very happy in this program. So our program is named MAEFS, which is related to education for sustainability. So sustainability is one of the key points that we are going to learn inside this program. So what sustainability means? So uh, basically it is related to the sustainable development and I guess some of you may already learn about this uh, sustainable development goals. So these are the 17 goals that has been uh, uh, suggested by the United Nations about how we can keep the earth, keep the whole world to be sustainable. So uh, there are different points that we need to pay attention to. So for example, uh, about the equality issue, about the food issue, water, and so on. So uh, sustainable development is actually the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So that means that uh, when we are using the resources, so we also need to consider about the future, about the next generation. So we want to keep 
the world to be as sustainable as possible so that it can be retained for our future generations. So in this program, so you will be able to learn how we can do to improve the sustainability of our world. And education for sustainable development is actually everyone's business because for a sustainable world, so the world is uh, actually all of us are living in the same road. So therefore, each of us will have the responsibility to improve the future. So therefore, we will say that the education for sustainability will be reference to everyone. So here are the aims of our program. So first of all, in our program, so we wish to develop students' recognition of the nature, the scope, services, and processes of education, training, and capacity building for sustainability. Second, so we will utilize the evidence-based methods. And in addition, we want to enable students to be able to evaluate their own actions in a critical and reflective way. Thirdly, so we would like to develop students' research capacity that can prepare them for the professional community concerned with sustainability issues worldwide. And lastly, uh, our program also aims to provide the enhanced career opportunities and also the capacity building for sustainable development. And also we wish that when the student graduate, they will also be able to adopt a sustainable lifestyle. So that means that this sustainable habit or this sustainable way of thinking should not just stop at this uh, educational age, not just stop in the program, but after graduation. So we want you to really bring it to the future. So you will continue to adopt a sustainable lifestyle. So uh, our program, so uh, we will emphasize the subject knowledge. So that means the subject knowledge related to both education and also sustainability. And in addition, we will also emphasize the innovative pedagogical practices, flexible teaching environments, and also a critical approach to think about educational and sustainability issues. So uh, it is also uh, should be highlighted that the medium of instruction in English so all of our courses will be taught in English. So for our program, so we will emphasize three aspects. It include knowledge, practices, and approaches. So for the knowledge side, so we will talk about the development of sustainability in the local, national, regional, and global consciousness based on different issues related to EFS for education for sustainability. Practices. So we want the students to be able to really practice out what they have learned. So they should be able to act as the environmental citizens. So they should always be focusing on the sustainability in their daily life. And other than that, so we will also develop the critical thinking skill of the students so that they will be able to analyze sustainability and also EFS issues. So our program structure, will include a uh, different aspect. So first of all, it will involve the consideration of the environment, society, and also economy. So these are actually the three most important aspects when we talk about sustainability. And other than that, so we will also have the education part. So we will talk about the pedagogy, that means the skills that at least to teach sustainability so that you are able to transfer this knowledge to the future generations. And besides, we also have the research part. So you will be conducting the research project and then you will be able to work on your own project to explore how you can apply the knowledge to solve a problem. So these are the five major parts in our program. And our program also has very, uh, it's also very unique because uh, it is interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary in nature. So uh, in fact, our students, they come from different backgrounds and our teaching staff also uh, have very different backgrounds as well. So through this kind of um, interdisciplinary discussion, so we will be able to have uh, the analysis about sustainability issues from different points of views. And besides, we also have the pedagogical literacy. So we will teach about how you can teach the future generation about sustainability issues. So we also focus on the educational skills. And so this is unique because uh, we are not just focusing on the subject knowledge, not just related to environmental science or other 
uh, subject knowledge, not just focusing on sustainability issues, but we also highlight the pedagogy. So there will be a very good balance between the two sides. So if you study in this program, so you'll be able to learn about both education and also sustainability issues. And this program is very unique and it is only offered by our university in Hong Kong. So that means that if you go to Hong Kong, you can only find this education for sustainability program in Hong Kong, but not in any other university. So as I mentioned, so this is an interdisciplinary program. So therefore, uh, graduates from all the disciplines, they are welcome. So no matter you are studying from science or arts or social science background. So if you're interested in learning more about sustainability issues, then you are welcome to apply for this program. And uh, actually our, our students, they also come from different centers. So we have fresh graduates, and then we also have some students who are originally working, but they want to explore themselves to sustainability issues. So we have like in service teachers, and also the workers coming from the non-governmental organizations, government officials, and also the consultants from public sectors and also other, uh, other uh, occupations. So our students have very diverse background and they also come from different sectors in addition to the fresh graduates. So if you are interested, then you are welcome to apply no matter what background you have. So uh, here, let me share some photos with you about the activities in our program. So uh, as I have mentioned, so our course, we also focusing on practice a lot. So uh, in addition to the traditional way of studying in the classroom, so our courses, we also try to incorporate field trips uh, to the different places so that the students will be able to learn about uh, the sustainability issues in uh, more uh, interesting and also in a uh, real way. So here, this is the field trip to the Green Hub. So uh, the Green Hub is actually a place for sustainability education. And actually, uh, originally, it was the old police station. So uh, this is a place for the, uh, so you can see there's a lot of like green plants and also a lot of um, sustainability issues that you can learn here. So the student, they will visit uh, to this place together with the teacher, and then they will see how the sustainability can be applied to keep this kind of environments, keep this kind of green environment in an urban area like Hong Kong. So you'll be able to learn a lot of things if you go to the field trip directly. And then we also have the field trip to Starfish Bay. The students go to the Starfish Bay, so which is a seaside area, and then they will study the biodiversity and also our sustainability issues directly. So you can see the students, they are actually very happy in these field trips. And then we also have this kind of hacker culture experience. So uh, in the places, so uh, like Hong Kong, so it is very uh, highly developed and you can find the urban area everywhere. So you can find uh, tall buildings everywhere. But uh, at the same time, so we are able to protect some of the traditional culture. So for example, this kind of Hakka culture. So the students, they visited this place and then they can try to understand how we are able to keep these kind of traditions in uh, places or in a changing world. And then we also have some other uh, activities or projects, for example, this Hong Kong Fish Pond Conservation Scheme, so that students will also be able to engage in environmental protection by participating in these additional activities. So now may I talk about the courses. So uh, for our MAEFS program, so uh, students will need to study 24 credit points in total. So in semester one, so there are four courses which will count for 12 credit points. So these include the subject sustainability studies and overview, global and local issues in education for sustainability, learning and teaching in EFS, assessment and evaluation in EFS, theory and practice. So uh, these courses will help to give you some fundamental information about the essential knowledge that you need to study the EFS this includes the sustainability side and also the education side. And then in semester two, so you will need to study three courses, 
which accounts for another 12 credit points. So this includes the research in education for sustainability, sustainable campus development, and also a thesis writing course and research thesis project on EFS. So in semester two, so you will be able to apply your knowledge that you have learned in semester one. And then in this course, sustainable campus development, so you will be able to apply the knowledge and understand how we can use this knowledge to make our campus more sustainable. And not just for campus, but the same principles can also be applied to other organizations and you will be able to make use of these principles in the future after graduation in any other organization as well. And other than that, so the theory and also the research uh, course will also prepare you to work on your own research project and you also need to write a thesis. So you need to apply the knowledge that you have learned and then try to study and issues that you are interested in. So for our graduate, so we have different career prospects. So uh, some of our graduates, they are now governmental, uh, working in the government environmental protection department. Some are also working in the environmental NGO, enterprise for environment. Some also pursue further study that are related to the EFS and so on. So I, uh, here is one of our graduates in the cohort 2016 to 17. So uh, he is now pursuing his PhD in the University of South Alabama in the US. So uh, he studied this program and after that, so he pursued a PhD immediately afterwards. And he already has a pub publication in science, which is a very prestigious journal. So now let's see some of our student sharing. So uh, here we have Jade Liu. So he, uh, she was the graduate in the 2018-19 cohort. She received the first prize of the Li Ka Sheng Scholarship. And according to Jade, so she believed that studying in EFS is an excellent chance for her to get a further understanding about sustainability and education. And she can also learn about the research skills and experience. And after she completes the degree, so she wants to gain some teaching experience in Hong Kong and also pursue a doctor degree as well. And then we also have uh, Mr. Malik, so which is uh, the one who has published the science paper. So uh, according to him, so this program is not just a course, but more than that. So it really helped him to develop the cognitive domains and he has learned a lot about sustainability and how to, uh, how sustainability process. So if anyone wants to learn about sustainability mechanics, so he highly recommended them to study here in this campus and take in this course. So by the way, so uh, actually our student composition is very international. So we have local and also non local students as well. So here we also have Ms. Chong Ka Yen, which is a very recent graduate in the 2020-21 cohort. So uh, according to her, so this EFS program is guiding students to criticize sustainable issues and it's helped us to realize the interrelationship between human beings and also the nature and can bring an impact on the environment. And in particular, because we are now facing a problem of climate change, so it is more important for us to rethink about the sustainability issues of the whole society, but not just satisfying our individual need. And Due to the pandemic, so uh, in the last year, so we were conducting the online learning mode, but according to Kayen, so uh, this online learning will not uh, reduce the chances for the field-based learning activities. So in fact, we also have a lot of virtual field trip and additional online materials so that we are still providing a lot of learning opportunities for the students. So according to her, so it is very important for us to be able to apply the sustainability skills and techniques to our daily life after they are able to gain a deep understanding through, the, through this core curriculum. And she thinks that the program emphasizes our attitudes and skills, and it also helps them to build the ability to connect the theory to our life, but not just uh, based on the textbook knowledge. And therefore, we should criticize the existing problem from our surrounding environment and also the conceive the feasible solution to turn the concept of sustainability into action. So now let's hear the sharing of a current student. So Ms. Wang Shan is a current student of this year. So she has prepared a video and she will share uh, her experience with you. 
Hello， 大家好，我是王珊，现在是香港教育大学 EFS 专业的学生，呃，非常高兴今天可以跟大家来分享一下我在香港的求学经历。那这个专业主要是和环境保护以及环境保护教育相关的这样的一个专业。首先，在这个专业当中，它有七门的必修课，分别是 Sustainability Studies。An overview， 在这门课当中，我们要学习一些环保理念，以及这这种环保理念的发展的历史沿革，还有就是在当今的全球化背景下，我们如何去平衡经济发展与环境保护两者之间的关系。第二个 ，Global and local issues in education for sustainability。在这门课当中，老师会着重以案例分析的形式给大家讲解、分析在，呃，目前在全球或者在香港地区关于环境保护存在的一些问题以及一些，呃，解决措施。第三 ，Learning and Teaching in EFS 这门课会主要讲授如何进行教学设计。第四门课。Assessment and evaluation in EFS 这门课对应第三门课的话，它就是讲授一些教学评估方法。那 Research in Education for Sustainability 这门课程中，你会学习到非常多的呃学术研究理论，比如说 Positivism, Interpret i v i s m and Critical Research。这三种非常重要的研究方法，啊、嗯，在这一学年的学习结束之后，呃，会让大家完成一个呃一万字左右的毕业论文。嗯，这个毕业论文的选题会根据你自己的研究兴趣去圈去选定，所以嗯，大家要从一开始对自己的学习有一个整体的了解和规划。那在这一年学习当中，我自己感觉是学习的节奏还是非常的，呃，充实和就是学习是非常充实的。然后这个学习节奏是比较快的，你需要嗯，在一开始就比较能够快速的适应这样子的一个高强度的学习节奏，因为每节课你需要大概有一到两小时的课前预习的时间。需要去花这个时间去看老师上传的学习资料，那么在课后你也需要对这节课进行一个总结和梳理，呃，并且还要去完成老师布置的作业。这里也给大家一些小 tips 吧。首先就是每节课、每门课，你可以按照这门课的内容去建立文件夹，然后把对应的资料存放进去。方便你课前的预习和课后的查找。那在课堂上的话，我比较建议大家去记笔记，这样子的话，你在课后有不明白的地方，你可以很快的去有这样的一个辅助工具，帮助你去回忆老师上课讲解的内容。第三是，大家可以尝试用思维导图去把一些零碎的知，但是相关联。的知识点建立建立这样一个思维导图，帮助你去理解和记忆。那说完学习方面，想给大家讲一下在香港的生活。虽然是疫情的关系，我们在第一学期开始是网课，但是我还是选择了，呃，来香港。一个是我很想体验一下在香港的生活，再一个就是我很想，呃，比较。比较能够呃切身的融入到这样的一个多元的学习氛围当中，所以如果你也对香港的呃美食美景，或者是你就是单纯的想要在呃香港的各个大学里面去走走看看，然后去学习的、呃、去感受一下这样的一个大学学习氛围的话，那还是希望大家有条件可以来到香港这边。呃，切身的感受一下在这里的学习生活。那在住宿和交通方面的话，学校附近有很多呃比较不错的购物地方，还有就是居民的这种房屋可以选择去租住。那在交通方面的话，香港的交通是非常便利的。
，呃，每一个交通地铁枢纽站都会有对应的小巴、大巴以及地铁公交，呃，地铁和出租车站点这样的一个配套的交通网络。嗯、呃，去学校的话也是非常方便的，因为在。呃，大学站有校巴，然后每天有固定的时间可以供大家去来往地铁站和学校。呃，美食方面呢就不用说啦，如果你很喜欢香港美食的话，你应该呃自己就有这样的一个美食雷达，你可以去找到很多非常好吃的美食。那除了美食之外，第第三个不可以忽视的就是美景。比如说太平山的日落，还有像呃维港的这个呃夜景，还有像 M 家这样的艺术馆，都是非常不错，周末可以和朋友去呃走走看看的地方。嗯、呃，一年的学习时间虽然紧张，但是也希望大家能够读万卷书，行万里路，在这一年的学习当中，能够安排好自己的时间。嗯，多走多看，开阔眼界，去感受这样的一个多元的文化。也希望大家在这一年的学习生活中，呃，开心愉快。那今天我的分享就到这里啦，谢谢大家，拜拜。Well, I think Miss Wan has already give a very nice introduction about the life of studying in EFS in our university. So、uh, now may I share with you about some graduate employment status, which is、uh, the latest data in 2019. So、uh, actually every year, so we'll conduct some survey about the employment activities of our graduates. And so in 2019, so you will see that、uh, the largest proportion of our graduates will be education related sector. So a、uh, number of students, they will、uh, be working as teachers and also in other Uh, occupations that are related to education, and then we also、uh, have the students working in different kind of organizations, including the finance or banking related occupation, management, administration related, and some of them they also pursue further education. So,、uh, as you have already seen, so we have graduates who are pursuing further education in other parts of the world, and in fact, we also have some students who are also very interested in education, and then they are conducting further study in PhD or the education doctor, the F doc program in our university as well. So,、uh, they have a lot of、um, further education pathways. And besides, we also have the graduates who are working in the entrepreneurship, journalists, or media-related occupations. Some work as event planners, and so on. So, ah,、uh, now about the re requirement for entrance of this program. So, our university and also our program. So, we have some entrance requirement. So first of all, you need to fulfill this English proficiency requirement because, as I mentioned, so、uh, this program is conducted in English. So that means that all the courses and all the class activities will be conducted in English. So therefore, you need to fulfill the, any one of these requirements, either the IELTS six point zero, ah, which is, ah,、uh, the exam, ah,、uh, academic. Uh, academic IELTS, and then you may also take the TOEFL exam. So you need to get a TOEFL score of eighty, the internet based test, and you may also take the Chinese Mainland College English test, the CET, and you need to obtain band six in the CET with a total score of four hundred and thirty or above. And you also need to pay attention that so for the CET, the test results should be valid within two years, and we will also accept、uh, other equivalent qualifications. But in general, so、uh, I would recommend you to either get an IELTS six point zero or above, TOEFL score eighty or above, or a very recent CET in the two years with band six that means four hundred and thirty score above or above. So other than this English proficiency requirement, so of course you also need to obtain a recognized bachelor degree because this is a master program. So you need to obtain a bachelor degree from a recognized university. And in addition, so after you apply the program, so you will also be required to attend an interview. So you need to pass the interview before you are able to obtain uh the uh, admission offer.
So regarding the admission schedule for the taught postgraduate programs in our university for the September 2022 intake, so uh, the main round will be closed uh, on the 25th in February, and then the second round will be the 31st of May this year. And also the last round will be in June 2022 this year. And normally the selection process will be completed in July, 2021. So therefore we highly recommend you to apply for the program as soon as possible because uh, the applications, they are actually processed on a rolling basis. So when you apply to them, so actually uh, we will review the application, uh, we'll keep on reviewing the application until all the places are filled. So therefore, if you applied early and you are able to fulfill the requirements and pass the interview, so you will get the offer for earlier. So we highly recommend the applications in the earlier date. So regarding the tuition fee of our program, so it will be Hong Kong dollar 120,000. And for the accommodation fee, so depending on what type of apartments you are renting in Hong Kong, so it will range uh, differently. And for the different expense and also for the other kind of expenditure. So this table only serves as some kind of reference for you to think about if you want to move to Hong Kong to study. So you may also need to think about the financial parts. And then for our program, we also offer the prospective students with an entrance scholarship, which is worth uh, $10,000 per year for excellent students. So uh, for this entrance scholarships, so you do not need to apply because uh, the program team will nominate the students and then we will choose the students to receive this scholarship every year. And if you would like to contact our department, so you will be able to, first of all, you can access this QR code and then download the leaflet of this program. And you can also go to our department's website and you will be able to find this leaflet as well. And our program website is this one. So uh, www.fuha.hk slash maefs. And you may also want to email us for uh, this address, maefs at eduhk.hk. And we also have a number for the program inquiry. And we also have the different social media, including Facebook, Instagram, uh, the Weibo, and also WeChat. So you'll be able to get the information related to our department and also related to the program from different channels on the internet.